Reagan in New Jersey to, to pastor all, all, all alongside me. And that's going to be one special day when, when he takes care of his business down in Tampa, Florida. You get to hear from a man that Barry Bonds went one for 19 against. A man that struck out Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa. Uh, a man that uh, really needs no introduction. I think you guys were, did you get a baseball card this morning? <laughs> yeah, uh, and he, he's going to do autographs after the service, right Tully? After you get saved. you got to get saved and then he'll sign, sign an autograph for you. Uh, but will you give a warm introduction to a dear friend of our family, this church, Mr. Anthony Tucker. Housekeeping things first, it's a pleasure to be here. With Pastor Rhonda and Pastor Isaac and Diamond, I mean, we are family. I love them with all my heart. I, I really appreciate you having me back and letting me speak what's on my heart, something God's given me. Uh, we have a cold front in Florida, too. It's all the way down to 60. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to beg my wife to wear her boots and her... And her uh, tighties and their jackets, because I, like, I like that look. So I, I pray that we can get all the way down to 60 so we can wear leather and all that stuff. Please. So I'll, I'll tell Christine that we're moving up here. We'll see how, we, see how that works. <laughs> um, I have been around, it's been 20 years, uh, 1997. Uh, so this is 2017, real quick, let me add, yeah, 20. So. I usually can only add together enough numbers to make out my ERA, but I was able to drop that 20 on you. I'm excited to come here today. I got a message, and, and I think we can have fun with it. It's it's probably not as hard as the men's message last night. Who, who, did anybody go to the men's thing last night? Was that all right, guys? Yeah, yeah. awesome. All right, good. Good. Um, I'm actually excited to give this message. I usually don't give fluff and buff messages for anybody that had... Who? Who, who, who has not ever been introduced to me or at least seen me in church here? So like half. All right. Do I need to give a disclaimer? I'm not going to cuss. Uh, you know, I won't get my hair up in a knot, and, but we'll have some fun. I really appreciate, uh, again, coming. Thanks, guys. Hey, and you know what? By the way, the worship was unbelievable. It's getting better and better every year. All right. Dig this venue, although we need like another section over there now. So we need to knock out a wall and make another section. But I kind of dig the venue; it's awesome. All right. Um, before I get started, we're going to have a clip in a second. No. We're not going to have a clip. Our video in a guy got sick. The video guy got sick. I could pull it up on my iPad, but I don't think everybody could see it. All right. Well, let me set it up, anyways. Who's ever seen the movie For the Love of the Game? It's like a, it's a good movie because it's a chick flick, but it's a baseball movie, so it's kind of both. You know, you can, it's a baseball movie that a guy can go and see it with his wife. There is a there's a part where Kevin Costner is pitching, and he goes into Yankee Stadium, and I've pitched in Yankee Stadium. Is we got Yankee fans in here? All right, I'm gonna have a special altar call for you guys after service, and you guys all gonna accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm just telling you that now. You think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. So, anyways, he's in Yankee Stadium, and people are yelling and screaming on him, and he gets on the mound, and it pans to a guy going, "Yo, Billy!" And Billy looks and he goes, you suck. And, and another guy's yelling and screaming and people are blowing horns. And he's on the mound and he goes like this. He gets and he goes, I, I love when I'm in New York. I always know when I'm in New York. And then the batter kind of steps in. And it, to me, it's probably one of the greatest scenes in any baseball movie ever made. Because it actually, it actually is like this. When the batter steps in and your focus goes away from the crowd and it goes to doing your job it goes to taking care of your business it goes to that hitter the catcher the umpire 
the he says clear the mechanism and he goes like this and he looks in and the and everything fades away in the background like it even gets fuzzy and, and you, you can still see the guys jumping and yelling and screaming but you can't hear them you can still see the guy blowing the horn but you can't hear it and the guy's sitting up there pointing fingers at him and you can't hear him and the 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 the, the, the camera pans away and all you see is you see Kevin Costner going to his lineup. He delivers a pitch, and you hear strike one, like that. And when, when you play, I've had the opportunity, and this is what we're going to talk about today, to be offended and be upset and have my feelings hurt by all you Yankee fans. <laughs> Even that little eight-year-old kid that cussed me out in 1991 for not giving him a ball. <laughs> and I looked at the dad and I said, dude, you're gonna let your son talk like that? He goes, you heard what he said and he had a guy cussed me out. <laughs> so I threw him the ball. <laughs> Oh, by the way, another thing you need to know about me, when I come here, I wear something of what? Pastor 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 Pastor. I ain't got a stitch of pink in me. I gotta wear somebody else's shirt to kind of have, I think it's actually orange, thank God. That's another, th that's another thing that's changed over the years right there. All right. Before I start, I say I don't even have to write it down. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give you praise and glory. And I thank you for this house today. God, I am so excited to be here. It is so wonderful to be in the presence of Shore Christian Church. And I just pray, Father, that you move me out the way. You've given me a word for these people. And I pray that I diminish and you increase and you deliver this message through me. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to receive, Father, from what you've given. And if anything is not of you, Father, I just pray that they forget. If it's of me and not of you, I pray that they forget. I love you and I praise you and I'm thankful for this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Something on my heart this last couple of years, actually, and I'm going to be addressing the body of Christ, not the world. Although some of the stuff is about what's going on out there, but I'm addressing us this time. Um, we're going to talk about feelings and offenses. When you're playing, you have to have a mindset that you can't let people's words, their verbal stuff, you can't let that bother you. When I was a, an athlete, when I was getting paid to play the game, you know, my guys, they didn't care if I had a bad morning. They didn't care if my wife was mad at me. They didn't care if a guy yelled at me on the way to church or to the game or to the grocery store. When I was in Montreal, the, <laughs> the French people up there couldn't stand us. So they would speak French. They, wouldn't, they would, you know, drop stuff. And they, they were really rude to us. And, and, and you go in other places and you're walking down the street and, in New York, somebody's going to say something about the Yankees. You know, the guy's got a hat, a tattoo, and, you know, every World Series is tattooed down his side. It goes all the way down to his leg because he's a Yankee fan, so it goes all the way down to his leg. When I get to the park, they want me to do two things. They want me to be a good teammate. They want me to be good in the clubhouse. They want me to be good in the dugout. They want me to be supportive. And the other thing they want me to do is they want me to get somebody out. And if I am worried about outside influences, things people have said, articles in the paper, the media, man, they're tough on you. If you let that bother you, you can't do your job. And, and guys, what happens if I can't throw the ball across the 17 inches of home plate? Guys, what happens to me? You're fired. I'm fired. I'm washing windows. I'm washing windows someplace. Uh, not to downgrade washing windows, my dad washed windows, but I, I'm, I'm fired. I lose my job. I can't function. And, and the worst part is, if I can't do my job, am I doing what God anointed me to do? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. 
So I've let somebody else's opinion, their feelings, their words, their, 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 their letters, their articles, I've let it affect my life. And it has really, honestly, nothing to do with me. Tom Brady, uh, I watched an interview with that guy, and he said something spectacular, I thought. And he goes, I do not let people's negative energy affect anything about me in my life. I don't let it in. He goes, people can say whatever they want. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with them. And I, I, I appreciated that. One of the things that, that you, uh, one of the things that you get when you're playing baseball is uh, you get some thick skin. Your skin gets thick. And you just kind of learn to let stuff roll off. And, and I'm Italian, so I, it's like in our heritage to be offended. <laughs> it's in our heritage to be offended and carry the offense for generations. And like we're, you know, the guys in Sicily that, that, that my grandfather came from, that are still killing people for stuff that happened, you know, 78 years ago. And they're looking for children's children to, to do stuff to, you know, and, and, they, and they hold on to that. My mom's, her knuckles are this big because she, she, she still hates my dad's father. To this day, the guy's been dead for 30 years. And she, she likes, she's never been to his gravesite. I'm like, Mom, come on, really? But she, they, she carries it. She carries that offense. Um, can, can you imagine if I let every single thing someone said to me affect how I worked or lived? Do I dwell on everything the fans, the media say or print or blog or Instagram or Facebook or whatever? And then it says Yankee Stadium, which we address. And I'm going to tell you a little story about where I failed in this. There's a guy in Toronto for the Toronto Globe and Mail. The guy's name is Jack Todd. Big, tall guy. He would come in and character assassinate one person every year. He, he didn't cover our team. He covered the Toronto Blue Jays. And the guy was ruthless. He was brutal. And for my first five years in Montreal, I, I managed to avoid his pen, which was very cool. I mean, I... Basically, you know, I have my issues, but I'm a pretty nice guy. Like, I get along. I never had really many problems with teammates along the way. Uh, just the ones that were ungodly and wanted to throw it in my face, then we could have an issue. I didn't mind that. But this guy came in one time, and we were in San Francisco in my home city. So I had, like, 30 passes. My, my pass section looked just like this right here. You know, I had a bunch of people there. And I had just come off my second shoulder surgery, and I was, I was operating at about 60%. And, and let me just premise this right now. Um, I played in the big leagues, and I had a, a pretty good career. Now, I did not have a fantastic big league career. As far as talent goes, truthfully, I was a very average big league player. Very average. Because w w once you get to a level, there's players at that level that could play at the next level if they even had one. The Greg Maddoxes, the Barry Bonds, the Mark McGuire's. You know, they'll... Those guys in my generation, if there was a league higher than MLB, Pedro Martinez, they could have played there, not me. I was maxed out at the big league level. So me operating at 60% at the big league level, man, wasn't real strong. It wasn't real good. So I, 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 uh, I, I wasn't fully recovered. I pitched a night game, fairly good. And then Felipe Alou brought me back in to pitch a day game, and I got smoked. I gave him a grand slam, gave him a bunch of runs, and I had a miserable day. Jack Todd absolutely smoked my shorts in the paper. <laughs> I mean, heroes and zeros, this guy needs to get released, he's terrible, and he went on and on, man, the whole article. So I show up to the park, and one of the guys goes, wow, Telly, holy cow, bro, Jack Todd smoked you today in the paper. And I had, I had made a, a habit of not really to read stuff. You know what they say about the newspaper, you know, you believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. So I, I believed none of it, but I, I read it. I read it. And I got mad. To say that I got offended, Bob, I got offended. <laughs> so, you know, being the, the, the stud athlete or whatever you want to call it that I am, I, I, I got dressed and I, I'm telling you, man, the guy hurt me. He, he hurt me because of two things. One, he questioned my character. And you could question my ability, and you could say that I'm terrible, but if you question my character, now I'm like, hmm, you don't know me. And oh, by the way, side note for this guy, he left the United States and went to Canada in 1963. Anybody want to take a stab in the dark at that? Okay, so that's his character writing about me. 
and I knew it. And so I, I got dressed, and I'm walking, I'm walking out to the field, and, and, uh, and it was not Candlestick Park, it was 3Com Park at the time. Um, uh, no, AT&T Park at the time. And guess who's out there leaning on the fence? This big 6'8 guy jacked up. And man, <laughs> there was nobody in the park. It was him and a French rider, and I jumped all over him. I challenged him to a fight. <laughs> I said, you're a draft dodger. You know, you didn't have the guts to fight then, you won't do it now. I mean, I, you name it, and I said it to this guy. A couple of things, okay? <laughs> He's probably still writing, and I'm retired. Now, He's still that way probably, and I can, ha I can name a name. If we go out in the street later, I'll tell you what I thought, but we can't do it at church, Pastor Rob, I will not say that. <laughs> Anyways, you can imagine, and, and he, he's still doing that, he's still doing that. And I'm done, I'm retired, I'm home with my family, I'm doing my thing. So really honestly, did it profit me from doing that? No. It absolutely didn't, matter of fact, it hurt me. It hurt my character because the French guy that knew I was a Christian saw me doing that and he heard what I said. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was not cuss free, it was brutal. I was all over him. And I did it because his words and his letters, I let it offend me. It affected me, not him. He's still the same way he is today, he never changed. All the things that I said to him didn't make him better, it made me worse. It dropped me down to his level. And as believers, we're not called to do that. There's no, there's no, there's no, when you, when I studied this, this message out, there's no place where it says to take offense. Now, are there causes to take up? Yeah. There are, and we'll address that in a little while. All right. I'm going to do something fun today, and I want you guys, who, who's got their phone on them? Take it out. This is the opposite. You can turn it on. Don't let it ring. <laughs> this thing right here, and I brought it up, I usually wouldn't bring my, my phone up, but this is an offense magnifier. Okay? It really is. And because of this right here, because we carry it with us, we now have the opportunity to become offended by somebody else's post, their opinion, and that stuff has nothing to do with us or our character. It affects us in our daily life. And then, you know what the bad part is? And I got it down here. It says, we carry that offense around and it becomes our baggage. Mm -hmm. wow. So take out your phone. Turn it on. Got it? I know you got it. You guys got it? <laughs> you guys pull it up way faster than me. I know you did. Matter of fact, tell the truth. Who's on Facebook before I did this? <laughs> you know you were. <laughs> okay, let me get my passcode. Good. Turn it on Facebook. I know you were flipping Facebook because the guy got boring. I know you did it. It's all right. I know my audience. All right, I'm on. Now, here's the challenge. How many times can you scroll down before you get to an article that could raise an offense. Let's do it. I'll count. There's one. No. Oh. Hold on. I might not get past one. Yep. That's the first one. That could cause an offense. Okay. So my friend Dave Beers got pulled over and forced on his knees and was handcuffed and put in the back of a police car saying my truck was stolen. Don't think something that severe, the officer would double check the license, book. so now it's the officer's fault that he did that, okay? So there, I could be pissed, oh, I'm sorry. Can I, say that? I could be upset, I could be upset because my friend got pulled over by police and handcuffed, okay? Uh, second one, nope, third one. Yeah, Michael Smith, that's a picture of me. That's my feed, let's see what Michael said up to, to, to the comment, all right. I took some swings in a batting cage the other day and a bunch of these clowns had something to say. Let's see what they say. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, there's a guy that I deleted. Dave Beers, Michael, Michael, where are you at? Chris Wood. Michael Smith, you look like a pitcher that couldn't hit, lol, lol. I said, I said, no, I could swing it then, now I'm trying to stay healthy. 
He said, just don't hurt yourself, brother. You look good. Okay, that's good. Michael's all right. <laughs> all right. So I got, I got one. I, I made one before I had the opportunity to get offended. Who, who got past 10? You got past 10. That's good. You, you, you scan your feeds. How many? Okay, now we can put our phones away now, okay? So here's my point. We let in the ability to be offended daily. I'm going to have a challenge for you. There's a guy on here, Chris Pinder, I'll even say his name. And I was sharing it with Isaac. Played with me one season. He only played three seasons and he got released. And his son is now a big leader. And ever since I friended him on Facebook, every single time I post something, he says something sarcastic. I'm like, dude, really? Every time he feels the need because he's not happy where he is in his own life to rag me on Facebook. So everybody could see what he's a big man and he says something. He threw a hundred innings in his career. Hundred innings. I played 17 years after that and had two surgeries and did all this stuff. And I would never think about posting and being really negative to somebody. Now, I have gotten in debates with people, and but I don't really do it. I, I, it never goes past maybe one post. And I tell you what I've done. I've stopped doing it. Yeah. If I get a negative post like Chris, I just look at him and I'm like, this guy, I mean, he's not my friend. I deleted him. Yeah. I deleted him. I'm keeping, I'm, I, I use social media. I, I'm not very good at it. I'm 51 years old now. I don't really care about it, but my kids love it. They like seeing themselves on my, on my, in, in my shop. I teach private lessons. They like seeing themselves. I tell them, hey, get, you're famous now. Uh, you're on Facebook. You're on my Facebook feed. You're famous. And they think that's the greatest. Okay? But if I sat and I scroll and I, and I read every comment, you're going to walk around miserable all day long. That's not what God is calling us to do. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're letting our feelings affect our job site, our relationships, our homes, and our church. Are we letting people's opinions that are inside the body, this is for us now, inside the body of Christ or even His church, are we letting them affect how we love them or how we see them? Mm. Are we getting offended if someone inside the body has a different opinion than us? Mm. Let me ask you a question. Did Jesus let his feelings change the way he loved us? Mm -hmm. Because, oh, by the way, while we were yet sinners, he died for our sins. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, you, you cannot say or do something to somebody else greater than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That the king of the universe came down and took all that to the cross, knowing that we were going to do the things that we do while we're in church. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, listen, you, for those of you that don't know me, if I get up here and I'm, and I'm giving a message, it's because I'm going through it or I went through it and God dealt with me through this. Yeah. So this isn't something that I'm just spewing out. This is something that I'm going through that I see that hurts and that's something that way God's dealing with me. In John 17, 26, John 17, do you guys remember this? This is the prayer. This is Jesus' prayer in the garden. He's getting ready to be betrayed. Judas Iscariot's on the way up the mountain. Okay? And he says, and I have declared them, I have declared to them your name, and I will declare that the love which you love me may be in them and I in them. Amen. Okay? Amen. And later on in the verse, And I'm going to talk about this. He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Amen. Those whom you gave me, I've kept them. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, remember who the son of perdition. This is Jesus praying for his guys and praying for the son of perdition. Yes. He's praying for Judas while he's saying this. And he says, but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. 
So he's praying for the guys that's betraying him, and he goes, look, but give them my joy. Hmm. Is that walking in love? Yeah. I mean, that's walking in love, correct? Let me ask you guys a question, and then we're gonna we're gonna remedy the situation. How are your posts? Are you sharing or posting things that could cause offense? I have. I, I with the with the with the um, and I don't know. And, and to this day, I don't know why I did it. Because I usually stay away. But when the election happened, I shared a bunch of stuff and posted a bunch of stuff that divided our entire country. And, and, I mean, you know, I voted for the guy. I voted for him. But, but that's my opinion. That's, what the, that's, why the voting, that's why the voting thing is closed. That's my I didn't have to. I really, honestly, I didn't have to share anything. That's my opinion. Did, did I cause offense by the way I voted? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm ecstatic with the way it, it turned out. And I just pray for our country to go into a good direction. I mean, and I'm burdened that, you know, like I said, I pray, I pray for the guy. I, I pray he does the right thing. I don't know. None of us do. It's not going to change anything about the way we walk. Because at the end of the day, four years is going to go by, and we're going to be doing what we do. We're going to be worshiping and serving and doing our thing. Yeah. Yeah. But our offenses and our, and our attitudes and stuff like that, it just makes it bumpy on us right. on the way. The verse that came to me when I got this, by the way, let me see what time it is. The verse that came to me when I got this is this, and it says, Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And this I pray, Paul's saying to the Philippians, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the body of the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory of God. Here's how that verse reads. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more, and your love may abound more in knowledge, and your love may abound in all judgment. Amen. So you are to learn and judge in love. Amen. Okay? Our love is the result of our ability to both discern and choose what is morally best, and as a result, our lives will be transparent and pure and will not provide others with the occasion for stumbling or becoming offended. Amen. It's about how we walk, guys, in love. Amen. Pretty much in conclusion, I'm going to give you three things that God gave me that can help us not walk in offense. First of all, it's prayer. Amen. Yeah. It, you cannot be offended with a person you are praying for or with. Wow. Yeah. You good. can't do it. That's wow. good. If you are, you can't stay offended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you're praying for somebody and you're going to the Creator and you're telling Him to love on them, you've got to love on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's good. Amen. So if you get an issue and somebody's doing this, it's like I prayed for Chris this morning, right? I <laughs> tried to lead him. <laughs> I prayed for him and his family. Okay, and I'm not mad at Chris. He just he's got to deal with himself. It's he's mad at me because it's something he didn't do. He never got out of Abel, and he's probably upset with that. His sons in the big leagues. Okay? Nicole, come here. Come here. God gave you to me in this message. Come here. Come here, sweetheart. Do you know I love you? Yes. You do, right? Yes. Okay, now listen. Nicole ushered me into the presence of God this morning. Amen. Okay? Would it be safe to say that over the last two years we've had at least one disagreement in principle or opinion concerning on Facebook? Yeah. All right. Does that have anything to do with how much I love her as a sister? Does that have anything to do with her walking up here and ushering us into the presence of God? Does anything that she said have anything to do with eternity? So how do we handle this? Do we walk in love or do I sit there and go, well, you know, she said whatever and I'm not receiving worship. So you're telling God that your feelings are more important than his. 
He's anointed her to lead this church in worship. And oh, by the way, it's the best worship in 20 years this church has ever had. And God, is, and God is using her to bless the body. Yes. Yes. So opinions aside, we walk and we look and we think and we talk in love to each other. That, and, and believe me, guys, you know, do you believe that I have issues? <laughs> I do. I have strong opinions. I'm very opinionated. I am very black and white. I don't have, like I said, a stitch of pink in me. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. Breast cancer awareness, I get it. Write a check. Don't worry, Pink. <laughs> Write a check. That's, that's how you do it. It's not about, it's not, that because that can cause somebody to get offended. It, it, you know, the whole thing, anything, we take offense over the stupidest stuff. And that's not what God's calling us to do. Would you agree? I love you, Lord. You can go. But that's my point. I mean, we had a, they, they, by the way, hey, Colin Kaepernick still got a job. <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> but, but when we're, but when we're talking about the body of Christ, let's get past the petty. Amen. Let's be mature. Amen. Let's quit drinking milk out of a bottle and start eating some steak. Amen. And we do that by growing some thick skin. We do that by praying for one another. Amen. We do that by lifting holy hands and worshiping the God of heaven together. Can anybody, if anybody in here can be offended while you're worshiping, you better get on your knees and you better find out what God wants for you because you're in a bad spot. Amen. Yeah. All right. The last thing is the word of God. Find where it says not to walk in love. That's all. I mean, find it. Look up the word offense and go through it and find out where it was good to be offended. And then just email me. <laughs> My email will be clean forever. In conclusion, we are passionate about something. We should first take it to the Father and ask Him how we should react or respond. Why don't we ask Him for the grace and the patience to deal with how others react and respond? There are causes to be taken up. But if that cause is going to derail our love walk with our fellow believers, then we need to take a serious look at the root. And I got in here the bottom line, and, I, and this is wrapped up. When we turn and we narrow our focus, remember I said Kevin Costner, he's on the mound, he was in his thing, and he said, clear the mechanism, and he went like this. And everything around him became white noise. And that's what happens. It becomes white noise when your focus is right where it needs to be. All right? So when we turn and we narrow our focus on the one we're supposed to be focusing on, who is that? Jesus. Jesus. Unity will come. And we can truly walk in love. We cast our cares on him who loved us. We don't cast our cares on friends. We don't cast our cares on Facebook or Twitter. And we'll be able to be and do what he commanded, and that is love one another with the love that God through Jesus loved us. And that's my message for today. Here's my challenge for today. I want you to do me a favor because I'm doing it too. I want you to go 30 days, not without Facebook, but when there's a political or an offensive post that comes by, when somebody halfway across the, the country is offended because they got arrested or something like that, I want you to delete the post, okay? I'll tell you a little funny thing. I got pulled over the other day, and I have a carry permit, and I carry a weapon. And I got pulled over. I was with my son, and dad, and he's, we're going to shoot pool on a Sunday after church, okay? And I got pulled over. And uh, who would be nervous getting pulled over with a gun in, on them? Yeah. All right, well, when you have a carry permit, I, I put my hand on the steering wheel, I handed out my permit, I handed out my license, and the officer asked me if I had a weapon. I said, yes, sir, it's on the right hip. And he said, I'm going to have to ask you to step out of the car. I said, yes, sir. I got out the car, I put my hands up, he took my weapon, walked it over to the car. Okay? 
He said, your tags are expired. I said, what? My birthday was like seven days ago. He goes, yeah, your tags are expired, man. You got to get a new tag. He goes, I'm not going to give you, you know, a, a, a ticket, but your tags are expired. And that was Christine. She was, Christine, you were supposed to send me that. <laughs> We, we rectified it. I sent, the, I sent the money in. Okay? But, you know, I didn't have to get offended that he pulled me over. I didn't say anything smart to the gentleman. I complied. I did not give myself a chance to become offended or get my feelings hurt because he pulled me over or whatever else. I complied. I did what I was supposed to do as a believer. did what I was supposed to do as a man. And we, he gave me my gun back in like five pieces. And he goes, yeah, I don't give back all the guns. And I said, yeah, thank you. So I put it in there and took care of it later. And then I went and played pool with my son. And we had no issue. Because I wouldn't let myself get offended or mad at nothing. Trying to walk in love. Trying to be respectful. People got hard jobs. We got hard lives. Let's give each other a little space. Not be so critical. Not walk in judgment. It's walk in love. Amen. 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 says my swing sucked. You won't worry about it. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we love you. I praise you and I thank you for this church, for the body of Christ, for the reception that I got and, and the reception they gave you. I pray you help our hearts, Father. Think in our skin, Lord. Let this garbage roll off us like water off a duck's back. Let us handle offense the way Jesus did and walk in love. Let us be strong and courageous, but walk in love. Let us be firm. Let us be black and white, but walk in love. The world wants us to stand up and show you to them. Help us do that in a way that's attractive to ways. Let us not be wishy-washy, but be firm. They're looking for leadership. We are looking for leadership. And I pray that you help us fulfill that call. Help us deal with daily grind. Thank you for blessing us with health and strength and finances. Anoint Pastor Isaac to continue to lead the way that you've Show him how to lead. I pray these things in Jesus' name because I love you and I'm thankful for you. Help me not to be offended. Help me to walk in love in Jesus' name.